I don't know how long this will take. In Mercury time. In Mercury time. I don't know. Um, what are we doing? Our orders are to proceed to Alpha Proxima, sir. Right. Okay. Where's oh. that? Why is Spock standing so weirdly? He's hunched over his science place. He's hunched over his tricor so no one can see him what, and why he's making all that noise. <laughs> Alpha Proxima, number 12. Um, oh, there I'm it is. Right. Uh, this one. Yeah, I guess that looks like a hell world. <laughs> so the reason we're investigating this is that we picked up a signal coming from a, an asteroid that only comes by every, like, hundreds of years. Right, so, and it's a god of war, so the people down there the can... Uh, the people on the planet... Not blow themselves up. Yep. The people on the planet... Um, standard order. ...are apparently 20th century, 21st century people, by our standards. Because that's all the uniforms we have. I mean, yeah. spare costumes. I mean... Too many to save uh, let's just replace Mission 6. And apparently when Scythe appears, it's a... It, it's, it's a mark for soul searching and all that stuff. Because they nuked themselves a they, few thousand years ago. Yep. So Scott, let's beam on down there. Mr. Scott, you have the car. So we're not actually beaming down to the planet. We're beaming down onto the ast the, the thing that's orbiting the planet. It's a good thing there's an atmosphere. <laughs> Mr. Scott? Uh oh. We didn't know then the shuttle. Down. Just a glitch in the main transporter program. Mr. Kyle is loading a bag up and we're performing tests. The transporters will be down for about an hour. That will still give us plenty of time, Scotty. I know. I have the labs and engineering doing a complete overhaul of the ship. <laughs> I see. What? It's taking advantage of this. Good, Mr. Scott. I'll keep you posted. Kirk out. Yeah, I was a little I confused when I first <laughs> heard that. It's like, oh, go, that's fine, we have plenty of time. And Scott's like, I know you have plenty of time, I'm hurrying! <laughs> I don't know. This is the planet Proxtray, currently 600,000 kilometers from this moon. This is the planet Prox... Aside from the security door on what should be a lifeless planetoid, this place is unremarkable. Area secure, Captain. If you say so, Ensign. You don't know that. <laughs> the atmosphere is breathable, Jim, but hardly nourishing. We should either get inside or go back to the ship. But can you eat the planet? Ask Gravy. You get no response. Um. There's no eat command in this. Fail to obtain any yeah, you cannot eat. This is not, um, not Space Quest. I believe Space Quest 4 has a taste and smell, um, command that are useless, I think. That sounds right. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know if we're on a time limit here. It's never come up. What is it, Scott? Oh, they have a problem on the Enterprise. Uh-oh. God damn it, Mrs. Scott. There goes our backup. Three hours. Do what you can, Mr. Scott. What backup plan? Back of just blowing up the <laughs> new asteroid oh, apart. blowing up the planet. Yeah, the phasers are offline. Isolate that virus. That's your number one priority. That it is, Captain. We'll keep you informed. Squad out. It's a very windy asteroid. Yeah. So I don't know if we're on a time limit or anything, but um, if I had scanned sure the outside with the tricorder medical. Bones would say something about radiation. No appreciable yeah. Radiation damage yet. Because we're just sitting on an asteroid. We're just on an asteroid. It's amazing we can breathe. The still appears to be <laughs> operating condition. Okay. A lens sits above the doorway, but is it mere decoration? This appears to be a dust-covered lens of some sort. Thanks, Spock. Thanks, Spock. Working display panel, Captain. There is power running 
to the keypad. Can you tell me anything else about it? No? No. This is a keypad that looks functional. Alright, so I mentioned this wow. mission is actually very mean. And this is Save actually the reason it's mean. Previous. Save new game. Yep. Save new game. <laughs> Alright, red shirt. Well, no, actually. Spock, see what you can do oh. with that lock. Spock, see what you can do with that lock. Alright, what's the code? Same as my luggage. That did not seem to work, Captain. Perhaps we should try a number that had some significance to them. Remember, they were very superstitious. Wow. They were. They and are, you can't beam yeah. up to the Enterprise to check the computer. Let me see. Your situation, Mr. Scott. Even when things, you know, even when the Enterprise isn't tied up in the B plot, um, you have no access to the ship's computer while on an away mission. So, if you didn't check the ship's computer for as much information on this asteroid and the people on the planet and the history... I read it all and committed it to memory. And if you didn't have a save on the bridge, you're just stuck here. You're not, you can't brute force this. The end. Yep. Turns out this is where Kirk died. Apparently, yeah. So let's try this again here. Alright. Also, it is, to be fair, if you talk to Spock here, um, before you warp, he says something like, perhaps you should use the computer. Perhaps you should do some research, dumbass. Yeah. Oh, they let Sulu say something. Wow. It seem to make sense. Captain, I just monitored a narrow beam message from site to Proxima 3. I don't have it all. I just caught a bit of the initial burst. I'm attempting a translation, but it appears to be a computer code. Uh oh. Any response from the planet? The that good. will not have the equipment necessary to understand and reply to that code. For another 25.6 years at their present rate of development. Okay. Alpha Proxima. Star system with five planets. Alpha Proxima 3. Proxtra. And Alpha Proxima 4. Gazel are both inhabited worlds. Okay. Uh, tell me about Scythe. A large asteroid in an elliptical orbit in the Alpha Proxima system. Well, let me pull out my lore book. analysis of its composition <laughs> indicates that it has minimal atmosphere and that it was once a moon of the planet Proxtra, hurled out of its orbit by a catastrophe. The 17th letter of the Luger alphabet is named Psi, probably not by coincidence. Okay. The part of it is 17. Uh huh. So now Proxtra, or. One of the two ancient races of Proxtra, they lived in a highly advanced culture that valued the community ahead of the individual. I'm getting a little ahead of myself, actually. Communists! Proxtray, there we go. The third planet in the Alpha Proxima system. This Class M planet is widely habitable, except for zones of extreme radioactivity on the southern continent. About 1,000 years. Kind of ago, pulling a Sherlock data here. Systems. Looking up stuff I already know ahead of when I should know it. That resulted in the deaths of three quarters of the world's population through direct or collateral damage. Proxtra's current civilization is non space faring and does not have contact with the Federation. <laughs> I see. Well then, so the Lukers hmm. and the Softs. Lukers, one of the two ancient cultures of Proxtra. See Soft's run. Run soft run. Run soft run. Their individualism put themselves at odds with the communitarianism. Luker sees Sox. Soft's run. The Lukers used base three. Their organization was based Luker on nuke softs. making up sets of ninety nine. The number ninety nine was known to have religious okay. importance. So seventeen and 17, 99. 
Okay. Uh. Aha, uh -huh. okay. So I think we have the information we need now. Now it's Lodora to save and bring our knowledge forward into time. Just like some video games. <laughs> Alright, let's try this again here. So, <laughs> something. Um. Remember they 17 were and 99. So, 17 and 99, so. Nope. To work, Captain. Perhaps we should try a number that had some significance to them. Remember okay. Well, let's Spock try. That did not seem to work, Captain. Huh. Perhaps we should try a number. Well, that... this is scythe, and the seventeenth letter of the alphabet is scythe, right? That did not seem to work, Captain. Perhaps we should try <laughs> a number that had some significance to them. So remember what the computer entry said about the su about the the I'm getting them mixed up the Lukers. They used base three, so oh. zero one two one zero one 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 two. Off the top of your head, what's ninety nine in base three? I hate other base. Mathematics. This is an extremely cruel puzzle. And then Spock is like, Ah, oh, I see that you deduced that 10200 is... Fuck you, Spock. You could have done that. <laughs> right, right? It's infuriating. That we tell Spock to do something. This game is doing something. so well up till now. This is just... Yeah. I mean, this game's great. And that this is definitely a low point. <sighs> All right, well, let's go back in. Go on in. Oh, look, another hey, door. Scotty, how are things going? <laughs> About as badly as a killed in a blast furnace, Captain. Wait a minute. He's You're dead? <laughs> the virus came from our sensor sweep of the moon's computers. We believe we have analyzed the memory sectors it attacked. Well done, Uhura. I wish I could take credit for it. It was Mr. Kyle who found the pattern. We are attacking it with antivirus who? programs. <laughs> that place doesn't exist. I'm wondering if Mr. Kyle is the guy, that blonde-haired guy who beams you in and out when we see see them beam. I'm not actually sure. Anyway, they're running... Maybe he was a programmer on the game. <laughs> <laughs> they're running all the antivirus. They're running Avast. They're running uh, Norton. Which no, don't do that. They'll attack each other. <laughs> Computer science sounds more like medicine every day. If we had a doctor as good with computers as you are with patients, we'd be having a lot fewer problems. Finally, someone who appreciates me. Keep working at it, Uhura. Kirk out. That's very really the one thing you never see. Like, a computer expert on Star Trek. Everyone's kind of just good at the computer in Star Trek, yeah. aren't they? Each word in the Lucre language has I mean, I guess aspects. data oh, kind of counts. Neutral oh, oh god. Aggressive. Oh no. To their no, Japanese. <laughs> this looks like some kind of security lock with heavy duty doors on both ends. Well, I guess it's more like Spanish which has a like in base three. a lot of nuances like that. You know, at least this one actually tells you keypad this keypad is in base three. three. <laughs> you know, that would have been nice if the keypad was ba it was wow. it told you outside. Like, yeah, this keypad with 0, 1, and 2 sure is normal. But this one... If you say so. Well, okay, go for it, Spock. Console reports the following. Welcome to Orbital Missile Base. Code name 
Welcome to this base. has been operational for the past week. It has completed one successful fire mission. Estimation of success is at 22 over 100. 22 percent? That's very low. Hardly something to brag about. Doctor, in base 3, 22 divided by 100 is equivalent to 8 out of 9, or 88 percent. I would think that quite satisfactory, given this base's probable mission of destroying the soft forces on Proxtree. It says the base has been operational for a week, but this has been here for a thousand years. What's the deal with that? If the What's the deal? Base with a clock that told the time by measuring the moon's rotation. I'll make a deal. Or the gravitational no. forces generated uh, by Fox Tree. Oh wait, that's wrong. The computer may have <laughs> Yeah, might. It's it's yes, but don't give them down. money, right? Its first anyway, I might be able to learn more with another look at the console. There is a substantial amount of data here, but in summary, Scythe was created by the Lukers as a launching platform for missiles to keep the Softs subjugated to their influence. The Softs managed to infiltrate the base. However, their actions triggered Scythe's auto-attack mechanisms and initiated a holocaust that nearly annihilated the planet. Nukes are bad. One soft strike did, in fact, hit but the antimatter torpedoes are fine. From its orbit. It has yeah. been dormant since then. Yeah. So why has the base been activated again? Given the damage to the moon, its slow rotation and orbit, it has never realized the war is over. On this pass, for the first time, it has detected radio wave transmissions from Proxtree. That's probably because bad. It does not recognize them. It assumes the softs are still active. Yep. It's, it's very bad, actually. All it's picking up is some some guy in the on a boat. I I, a pirate, I see that radio and running a pirate radio station, playing that sauce I hear. <laughs> playing oldies. Jim, let's return to the ship and blast this place to destroy its weapons. Doctor, this moon Bones. is a god to the people down there. If we destroy it, we will violate the prime directive. Spock is right, Bones. Spock, what are the chances that we could decode the transmission and send a stop code to the base? In trinary or decimal? <laughs> Spock, please. Yes. Spock! <laughs> 1.327 1 million to one. Provided the archaeological studies about Lucre's languages are correct, our other option is to get into this base and see if we can bring the computers down. I'll just blow up the inside. Yeah. All right. All right, what's the code? Obviously, it's go fuck yourself. That nope, that didn't work. Captain. It is probable this lock also. Okay, so we know the two numbers, 99 and 17. Um, so this one is 17. Okay. Yeah. Fascinating. If the Federation language studies were correct, the ideograph for the word side in the Lucre's language is the 17th symbol in their alphabet. That Thanks for explaining the puzzle, Spock. After we solve it. After we've solved the puzzle. Yeah, great. My tricorder is picking up large supplies of frozen oxygen, nitrogen, and carbon dioxide beneath the surface, enough to last many centuries. At least we won't have to worry about suffocating. We appear to be in some type of security lock. No defensive systems are apparent here, but considering the size of the doors, they probably don't need them. This place does seem to provide protection against cosmic rays. I don't see why they bothered putting an atmosphere here, Captain. There hasn't even been bacteria here in centuries, let alone humanoids. The Lucras did not seem to have a problem with security. Captain, we have a cure for the computer virus. Well done, Uhura. I modify control C. So that took us three hours. <laughs> they annihilated each other, Captain. Fascinating, Lieutenant. The Klingons aren't going to be happy to learn that they helped us. How about the phasers and tractor beams? We may get the tractor beams online in time, Captain. I'm afraid even the backup phaser transmission codes were affected. We could destroy some missiles manually, but if this complex decides to launch more than 10 missiles at a time... Understood. The ball is in our court. We'll give it our best shot. Kirk out. Save new game. Replace previous game. Delete. Save new game. 
Phew. That's that's few in trinary. Oh yeah, of course. This door appears to be very solid. This panel is designed to receive an ID card to make the door open. Uh Captain Got my ID card right here. Oh. Oh. Jim, you should relax a little more. <laughs> <laughs> this panel has a slot in it rather than a keypad. The slot bears traces of triphosphoric silver, and power is currently running to it. I am recording the pattern of this lock into my tricorder. There's nothing there. All readings are normal. The structure seems to be protecting us from the cosmic rays. Can't say I like the decor. The Lucas did not leave behind many examples of their architecture. I can see why. This is an ancient laser drill. Ensign Mosier scouts for signs of trouble, as well as glancing at the great looking <laughs> Wow! What a great looking drill! A say so. Box sits on the floor. I used the key card pattern scanned from the lock to program the drill. It should now be able to make a template of the key card in the rock. Uh, that's how that works. The drill is unremarkable, except its aiming component is corroded and frozen in place. Use laser on box. Uh, well, we can't because the box is nailed to the floor and the laser can't be moved. It's eroded or corroded. Or something. I can open the box though and take whatever's in it. This box contains old wire and connectors. Never know when you need some of that. Oh, I guess I just took all of it. The box is empty. I just took everything in that box. A length of wire with some sort of connector at each end. Just a cat five. Well, not really. Okay. Sure, it's not a USB. Spock, why don't you check out those laser drill controls? Wow, that was that Spock, was pathetic. Okay. There is nothing at the moment. Spock, why don't you? Ch I see. <laughs> Spock, why don't you check it? Huh? Captain. Wow. The template would be damaged by direct fire from the laser. So we are kind of accidentally solving this puzzle by just clicking around, but um, uh. <laughs> the laser drill has cut a template by using the because we scanned the lock and then had Spock scan the computer, he basically put in a template so that the laser drill wouldn't drill. It would make a template for a key card in this stone here. If you try to do that I before doing that, he says something like, Captain, this needs coordinates to work. If you try to use setting 100. Move out of the way, Mosher. You think you think Gravy's got it? Now use wire to melt the metal into the shape of the key co You are close, Gravy. You're very close. Um, you're on the right track, but we, the, the wire will not work. Uh, we need something of the same material that the keycard lock is looking for. And what are the odds that the fucking ground outside? Hang on, hang on. Is unremarkable. <laughs> Where the Is hell it a dark was it? Where was it? You failed. Is it out here? Like run the rocks out here. There we go. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's just out the. You have to get screen. ten feet away from the door. <laughs> yep, try phosphorus silver. So we'll just. And this up. is why you don't make your key cards out of the same stuff that's surrounding your base. <laughs> <laughs> yep, we just scoop up a rock, and we don't have any Aztec warriors to throw this rock at. So instead, we'll turn it into something a little more practical. So we will sacrifice the rock by shooting a laser at it. You got it. Or these three rocks. I don't know. It said I picked up one rock, but... 
the surface rocks and the tricorder scan I'm a few steps ahead of you there Mr. Spock I believe the laser drill can be used to fashion the ID card needed to open the sealed door in the other chamber like you'll you'll explain this puzzle Cook for me but you won't Twitter. yes <laughs> but you won't you won't give me even a hint about the the first thing we run into uh, maybe I should I don't know if you can stand in front of it and I use we already used the highest laser setting gravy. It didn't do anything beyond make the template. Yeah, uh, using the highest laser setting set just sets the template. Spock, why don't you check out? Oops! He could just fuck up and use the wrong setting and just boop. Try again, dummy. Great. Spock, why don't you? That's technically Spock's fault. Everything's technically Spock's this is fault. This keycard made from the triphosphorate silver rock. <laughs> yep, you were right, Gravy. You can totally fuck up and melt the rocks. All right, well we have a keycard now. A duplicate of the pass card you made. I mean, pass card. It's only a single pass, sadly. Do we need to wait for it to cool down? No! Absolutely not. No way. Hell no. Put your hands all over that. It's just like when we made that metal rod in the previous uh, mission. <laughs> by sticking a wooden, like, a wooden support beam into molten rock to coat it with iron. Oh yeah, that's just how science works, baby. Fuck yeah, science! <laughs> I like science. Now this is the power of math. Power of math. I meant to do that when we opened the door, but oh well. <laughs> uh appears to be the brain of scythe. Two identical. Okay. All right. So this one in the middle is the one what launches the nukes. Save new game. Replace previous. Time to push button. Let's push buttons. Hmm. This computer doesn't have a keyboard. Oh no. Jim, I don't know anything about these things. Damn it, Jim, I'm a doctor, not a computer nerd. We're safe from the cosmos. Well, all computer nerds in the future this bones. This computer cannot be accessed directly. It is controlled by the other two computers. This computer directly controls the missile launch system. There is no way to Mr. Spock, fire the missiles at the, the Enterprise. No, we already did the one where we can accidentally blow up the Enterprise. And everything else in orbit. And everything in orbit, yes. I love how matter-of-fact that is about it, too. <laughs> okay. Right? It's just all overall vessels have been destroyed. And I honestly love Wait that. Wait a minute. Aside from... <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, aside from it being the first combination you're likely to try, that that's great. Uh, it's delivered as Great. bluntly as it should. This computer is functional and performing an average 0.75 million uh, operations Hey, wait a second. second. Something's this not right here. This computer is functional and performing an average 1.2 million operations. Oh no. Uh, wait, which one of you is Spock? Okay. <laughs> well, from behind and from a distance, you can't really tell Bones and Spock apart. They both got a very uh -huh. similar figure and they both have black hair. Uh, wait, is that in decimal or try? What do you think? Spock, hurry! <laughs> Spock! Oh, Come on! run as fast as I can. <laughs> Someone didn't overclock the computer. Thanks, Richard. Captain. I have to assume the Alpha unit has a virus, which is using up an incredible amount of computing time. They report different optimum launch times, which is right. Given the elliptical orbit and the range at which they will pass Proxtree, the Omega unit is correct, but the window is very narrow. A variation of minutes will mean the missiles run out of fuel and fall harmlessly into the sun. Okay. Can you reprogram the Lucas computer to give us that time, Mr. Spock? 
Reprogramming an old alien computer is not simple, Captain. The odds against success are 10,221 to 1 against. Too bad is that in trinary? Couldn't just take it... a sick day and hmm. miss the firing. Because the two machines are isolated, the virus did not spread from one to the other. If we could only bridge them. If we could only. If only. If we could only bridge them. Well, I guess we'll call the Enterprise and contact the bridge. Damn, I'm out of <laughs> ideas. At your leisure, gentlemen. The connector snaps into place. Wow, you really, you couldn't just walk and do that yourself, Kirk? No way, absolutely not. All right, let me see here. If I remember right, there's actually a bug in this mission uh, regarding the scoring. Oh boy. Um, I need to have Spock, after I bridge them, I need to have Spock click on this one first. Okay, and then I'm gonna just be safe and use the tricorder on it too. This computer is functional and performing an app. Great, okay. And now I'll have Spock use this one. Whatever he, you know. On his own time. What if we just shoot the computer? It won't let you. I mean, there, Wait, there appear to be... What are those red things in here? Are those missiles? Yes. Those are nukes. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's why I want to put my nukes next to my main computer. <laughs> Home. Oh, jobs are good. All right, let's yeah, go that's home. it. That's it. We the missiles will hit the sun. Message from okay, because they're both infected with the virus. Yeah, basically, it throws off their timing, so the missiles run out of fuel. You and your crew received four commendation points. <laughs> Hard to believe that Earth came so close to the brink itself. Vulcans too. Both in the end looked into the abyss. Very relevant in the 60s, but this is 1992, remember? Logic? Humans? Yeah, but I mean... They, World War Three happened in Star Trek. Oh yeah, that's what they were talking about, likely. Sounds like emotion had its part to play in a positive sense, too. I don't know about you, but I'd like to bid an emotional goodbye to Alpha Proxima myself. Take us out of orbit, Mr. Silver. Oh, an easy mission. Yep, so here we come to the I final it. mission. Captain's Law. We are arriving at the last known position of the USS Republic, which reported that it was under attack 12 hours ago. Captain, the ship's sensors have picked up what appears to be a starship. Minimal life support, minimal engine power, and only two life forms. One on the bridge, the other in sickbay. Both appear to be gravely injured. It is the Republic. And well. if you don't recall, the Republic was the ship we had our mock battle with. Come with me. Mr. Scott? Oh, yes. by the way, you just go. Looks like it had a real battle. Yep. I am preparing an information packet for Starfleet. Shall I send it or wait for you to return it? Send it now. Send it now. The hostile ship arrives. Head immediately for Starbase 24. Yeah, just leave us on this floating wreck. Right? That's fine. Oh, fuck. Oh, God, Jim, what kind of butcher would do something like this? I don't know, Bones. We're too far from the Klingon and Romulan borders for it to be one of their ships. Enterprise to Captain Kirk. Kirk here. What is it, Scott? We picked up a distress signal. It appears a trading vessel is having a wee bit of trouble with their warp drive. What condition is the Republic in? Uh, uh fucked. It's a mess, Scotty. Life support's functioning, but that's about it. I've done a primary scan of the Republic's systems. Main and auxiliary power is out. Life support is stable. I also read that communications are operable. Should we beam you back, Captain? Do the sensors read any other ships in the sector? Besides the trade vessel, this sector is clear, sir. Mr. Scott, we will continue Great. here. Assist the trade ship and return here. If we need assistance, we'll contact you. You 
sure you'll be all right, Captain? Yes, no. they just don't no. take too long. Kirk out. Well, gentlemen, let's see if we can reestablish power. Jim, don't forget. There's another survivor on board. We've got to find him. I mean, right. He's in sick phase. Save we'll do that. Um. Delete. Save me. Uh, first, actually, uh, Gravy brings up a p something. Um, I don't know if you can... That sounds like something you can do. Let me see. Yes! 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 <laughs> you just shoot the computer and blow it up! Computer consoles do not take well to phase me. Sparks fly. In a defensive maneuver prompted by this attack... Maybe what happened last time it was attacked. ...launches a full spread of nuclear missiles at the Enterprise. That's right! You can blow up the Enterprise! Yeah. That's right! <laughs> the, the Enterprise... <laughs> It just launches it at the mid. Yeah, Enterprise just gets like two dozen fucking nukes just Load right into the bridge. Space. Oops. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that happens okay. regardless of phaser setting. The stun setting oh. Work, sir. I'm gonna shoot uh, the missile. <laughs> you had to blow it up, sir. <laughs> oh yeah, and you could just, you could just shoot the other ones too. <laughs> That's amazing. Okay. I'm glad you reminded me of that, Gravy. I forgot all about it. I know you weren't really reminding, but yeah, no, I, I had completely forgotten. Even when I had first when I first played through this as a test a couple weeks ago, I was sure in the back of my mind, wasn't there a way to like make the Enterprise get blown up? And I, I could not remember it. So, all right. Why does it shoot the Enterprise? It's not the planet. <laughs> right? How does it I don't know? know? I don't know. Anyway, yeah, this place is turbo the fucked. The screen is not functioning. Main computer banks. They appear to have been damaged. Here is the body of Captain Patterson of the Republic. He didn't die without a fight. A common tritanium geranium support beam, which has snapped away from the hull. This person is dead. Are you sure? They're dead, Jeff. All of them. Oh. Oh. It said we had a survivor on the bridge. Uh, on board. On oh, board. on board. Yeah, just on board. Uh, whoops, no, I don't want my phaser. So this mission... They detected two life forms? Yes. So, this mission is, um... Compared to the original DOS version... Well, this is DOS, but the original uh, floppy disk version... This mission is greatly expanded. This It's a oh, lot boy. longer. And I will explain what the mission is in the the DOS version, but there's a lot more to it here in this one. If we check out the computer logs... Captain, records indicate that this ship was attacked by a Constitution-class starship. Oh, what the... Any idea of which one it was? I am reading the record of a transponder signal, NCC-1701. It's the Enterprise, Captain. Someone must have tampered with the computer records. May I remind I don't know about that. that the main computer of a Constitution class starship has safeguards against such an intrusion. Furthermore, I do not see any discrepancies in any of the files that I am able to access. Yeah, because for one, it said there are two survivors, one on the bridge, one in sick bay. Mm. So we actually have to use the turbo lifts to get around on this mission. So oh all, god. Yep, all the yellow spots uh, are accessible, but keep in mind we're using this particular turbo lift. Um so we can't go here to engineering. This turbo lift cannot reach This is not area. TNG turbo lift. You can't go to engineering from the main bridge. <laughs> right. This turbo lift. So let's go to well, let's go to sick bay since apparently that's where the survivors were. The crewman's death was pointless, just like too many deaths in human history. I don't need to get philosophical, right? Words. It is blocking access to Turbo Lift Two. Well, you know what? I don't take too kindly to that. Take this. I should have known there was no one. On... Captain, the support beam for the oh. is damaged here. There will be no way to safely clear out the debris without I can't believe ah! the Constitution saw ships are just packed with junk. God damn it! <laughs> Unending ah! junk. 
in all the dead space between decks. It's got to run out of insulation at some point. Nah, we pack him tight. <laughs> Yet another crewman of the Republic whose life was unfairly abbreviated. He's dead, Gemma. I can't bring him back. I can't believe it. That's Brittany Morata. I knew her from my academy days. We studied alien history together. She's suffering from severe trauma and internal bleeding. I'll see what I can do. Do what you can, Bones. I need to find out what happened here. She's in bad shape, Jim. I've tried to stabilize her, but it doesn't look good. <laughs> She's in bad what? shape, Jim. I've tried to stabilize <laughs> her. The sick bay beds are handily coffin sh Oh, God. <laughs> oh, uh, that's no. dark. You always hope the instruments are wrong. You'll find someone alive. No, you won't get us. Marana, what happened? They said it was the Enterprise. They had visual confirmation. What about the Enterprise? You killed us, Jim. We were friends for you. I trust you, Jim. It wasn't the Enterprise, Marana. There's nothing more I can do. That won't bring her back. She's gone. Well. Yep. And, uh, um, I mean, I'm pretty sure what's going on here. Hmm. I won't say it. Okay. To keep the suspense. Alright. I mean, I could be wrong. Okay. You pick up the empty hypodermic injector. You fail to obtain... So we want both things here. You retrieve the medical drill. But there's not really anyone to use them on. Did I ever mention how much I hate... Hot Shut up, Ensign. I believe nothing needs not to the be time, Ensign. Life support must have gone down during the fight. Most of the people died from shock before the backup systems came online. Fucked up. Well, gentlemen, let's see if we can re-establish power. You already said that, Kirk. I'm gonna say it again. I'm gonna shoot it again. Don't look at me like that. Captain, the support. Well, good thing see. we saw a handy dandy support beam on the bridge. You're absolutely right. All right, places, people. <laughs> Put this in my pants. We can't. Take oh, I can fix part. that. <laughs> um, I. All right. Well, I'll try. <laughs> Captain, these phasers are not configured for fine cutting. We could cause extensive damage. What do you mean, could? Ah, fine. Find one of those suit phaser cutters mm -hmm. again. Well, let's go to auxiliary. Whoa, careful. Yet another crewman of the Republic whose life was unfairly abbreviated. A molecular saw. The 23rd century equivalent of a hacksaw. Okay. Oh. <laughs> you retrieve the molecular saw. I wonder if anything will be working in auxiliary control. The Starfleet engineers did their work well, Captain. A surprising amount of the ship is intact. Too bad you can't say the same for the crew. I'm not in a talking mood right now, sir. Oh, now you're not. <laughs> no. I'm responsible for this and give them a piece of my mind. You'll get your chance, Bones, I promise. This door leads to auxiliary control. This corridor leads to auxiliary control. It is a real mess. The vent is far too small for any one of us to fit through. It is also blocked 0.3 meters inside the duct. The vent. 
This is the maintenance panel for the auxiliary control room door. I'm gonna touch it. Touching your door. The panel has been fastened shut with some kind hey, of... Yeah, we could use the hacksaw to make the red shirt fit. Oh, yeah. Hang, hang on, hold on a second. Yeah, hold still, Ensign. Nothing happens. Oh, he's immune Damn, to it. Damn, he's immune. <laughs> oh, well. The one trait he took was immune to molecular saw. The drill easily breaks through the seal of the panel. But, uh, yeah, the we're not quite easily. done with this puzzle, unfortunately. There's stuff in it. The debris is jammed in too tight. Time, take, time to... Take debris. <laughs> the debris is jammed in... No. Shoot debris. That may not be wise, Captain. It could damage the entire door assembly... Use saw it again? Use saw ah. on debris. The saw is too bulky to reach the jam. No. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll come back to this one. But, uh, we have something we can Find use the saw. Find a photon grenade. Yes. Just detach the support beam. The molecular saw easily cuts through the beam, separating it from the hull. You pick that up was a noise. Beam. It's a little heavy, but you manage it. Kirk, no, what are you, Kirk, where are you going? Oh, okay. Yeah, I had to walk around this way. Yep, taking the scenic route. Alright, so now, with this girder here... Definitely not a steel eye beam Tonk. All done. <laughs> Stand a safe distance away. Don't want to get hit by disintegrating debris. Nope. Oh, by the way. This is a length of heavy-duty insulated power cable. Don't mistake that for... Though it's useful. Yep, don't mistake that for window dressing. You Yoink! The cable. Hmm. Oh. Picking up a functioning energy source in the immediate vicinity. We're an engineering spark. <laughs> Nothing to report. I'm picking up a high energy power source somewhere under the debris. I recommend caution, Captain. Can't believe they put the warp core under this trash. Because this is a bit of a mess. Caution, huh? Well, here, I know how to. <laughs> Deal with debris. Oh my God, Jim! Oh. Is that what I think it is? Yes, Doctor. It is a portable oh. fusion power. Oh, and we just shot at that with a high-setting phaser. A few centimeters lower with that phaser, and half the section would be history. Not to mention us. Actually, Doctor, 3.2 centimeters, and based on our proximity to the explosion and the angle of the beam. Thank you, Spock. I think we get the point. The cook's a good shot. Put the phaser away. <laughs> you almost killed us once already. I'm pretty sure that's the solution to that. Um. You fail to. You fail. Yeah, you, you can't. He's not gonna dig through it with his hands. Nothing happened. Yeah, you you can't do anything other than use Spock on it. I'm picking up a. He just oh, scans okay. it, he looks at you. and the red shirt's just like, what the fuck, so, yep. I'm not paid to dig through that. You're not paid anything. Oh my god, Jim, is that Exactly. Is? <laughs> yes, Doctor. If you actually... Thank you. You failed to... Well, this is mine now. You pick up the portable fusion power pack. This is the fusion oh, this place looks remarkably intact. Yeah, um, it seems like they only These most the they, they mostly fucked up the the saucer. It seems if that um, if that outside shot of it were anything to go by. 
thing one and the cells may have had some damage, yep. but yeah. We could use the fusion reactors from the impulse engines to restore power, but the lines have been severed to the power regulator. Can we reroute the power lines? We should be able to, Captain, if we can find a suitable supply of power cable. We will need to route Since the staring power at your pants, <laughs> bulging with power cables. A direct connection to the regulator would call. Mr. Spock, this is not that kind of show. Raising an eyebrow. <laughs> Nothing to report. These are the controls to. This is a standard storage closet. The closet opens, revealing a library of engineering technical journals. Okay. Oh boy. Books. You take the engineering technical journals. Uh. Where's the section of what to do when under... <laughs> you're attacked by your own starships? And this is... what is this? This is a canister of high-grade multi-purpose oil. Very useful for lubricating machinery. Ah, I could use that. The oil Everyone could use a good drink. What? Oh. Why? <laughs> Why? What? Why? <laughs> Why? Huh? Captain, it would be unwise to use your... Shh. Nothing happens. So we cannot remove the canister Nothing from the, the wall. I... Wh so instead we'll use this needle here. The hypo is now filled with... Don't stab it into the can. All right, hold still, Ensign. Nothing happened. Oh, he's immune to oil too. Wow. Wow, the two traits he took. Keej fidgets nervously. <laughs> I don't blame the poor guy. Save need replace. Um. So I'm saving a lot because uh, this mission is uh, it's not that it's mean or like there's a lot of ways to die or anything, but it's <sighs> a little buggy. Oh boy. Um There's one instance in particular that if I don't if I do something wrong, we're soft locked and have to start over. So Oh boy. Yeah. It's kind of unfortunate. It is illogical to you. Shut up, Spock. Nothing happened. Nothing happened. Right, so we've got that connected. We've got one cable. We need another one. Oh. <laughs> Where could we possibly find more heavy-duty power cables? Oh, look. Yep, there's another one right here. Also, look at this poor guy. Holy shit. This man is dead. Eesh. There's nothing more I can do. It appears to be a section from a coolant exhaust port. I would not recommend too close of an inspection, Captain. The floor could collapse from our added weight. Save me reflect. That sounds like a challenge, Mr. Spock. Um, he says that, but... Captain, please be careful. The oh. floor in that area is very unstable and might collapse from our added weight. Like... Captain, please be careful. I, I don't... Captain, please be careful. Doesn't Captain seem like anything know, maybe actually happens. So doesn't like Captain ding your score for being unsafe. <laughs> maybe I don't know. Oh. You pick up a length of cable. How's the transporter room looking? Uh, oh, eh, right. not right. that yeah. bad. Yeah, uh, a few sparks here and there. Um, the loose pipe. Transporter controls have escaped damage. Nothing to report. Nothing to report. The transporter room appears to have escaped. Well, we already know that, Spock said. This is the transporter chamber. The pads do not seem to be damaged. These are the power conduits for the transporter system. Spock. Please check out the transporter. The 
impulse engines are not generating any power for this system. Well, okay. It didn't turn on, Captain. Can't go to weapons. Triple lift access is blocked by an extremely high radiation level. This turbo lift. Right, right. Can't do anything the easy way. Well, first we That's need to. That's too convenient. Right. First we need to restore power. So let's go ahead and do that. And we need to go to engineering for that. Actually, incorrect. But while we're here, we can at least do this. I said we can do this. Come on. Wow. I can't believe it takes two people to do this. I guess it's nice and convenient <coughs> that way, but you know. Cable between the impulse engine and the junction box. So, now that we have that connected, you'd think we'd just Please flip the switch. But, uh, Lock. we have no idea what the correct impedance setting is. And if we, we get it wrong, well, reactor meltdown. It then explodes. Kaboom, and, uh, no, we don't want that, so... We need to find a way to figure out the correct impedance setting. What you should have done is ask the computer the normal <laughs> impedance setting for a Constitution you class literally starship. You had no opportunity to access the computer for this mission. That's what you think. And it would be amazingly bullshit if that was what you had to do. <laughs> is just look up the impedance setting of a Constitution class warship for no reason in some <laughs> other mission. Thankfully, hey, hey, the starships, not warships. The Federation doesn't make warships. Did I say warship? Thank you. I'm sorry. I just want to say <laughs> starship. Anyway, we now we'll just grease the, the wheels here. And loosens the debris. <laughs> that loosens the debris, so now we can open the door. Yeah, whatever. The gears are completely cleared of debris. The gears are clear. Save new game. Reflect delete. Pre Save new game. Replace pre so here's the battle bridge, I guess. I don't know if the constitutions can saucer separate. This is auxiliary. No. Control. Actually, I think this is in the saucer. Excuse me. Yeah, this is. I assume this is an uh, auxiliary. This is bridge? auxiliary. Auxil yes. Um, this yeah. is actually. It is literally called auxiliary controls. So you're correct. These are the auxiliary helm and navigation Why is the narr narrator saying this and not Spock? Intact, the ship is in no condition to move under her own power. These are the auxiliary The impulse power allocation controls are functional, but there is no power available, Captain. But what if you talk to Spock beforehand and he says like, "Wow, those constitution class ships sure are cool." <laughs> I don't think that this input output slot for the record decks is still functional, Captain. Ah, this good. Captain, I have examined the engineering journals. According to Chapter 18, we can run... Jim, do we really need a lesson in starship engineering? Spock, just tell me if they will help. Why, yes, Captain. I believe nothing... I'm glad this isn't the Enterprise. If there's anything I can do, sir, just ask. What a mess. I wonder what we can do to fix this. Nothing happens. I have memorized all pertinent data, Captain. There is no need to re-examine the journals. Well, okay. I know exactly what you need, Captain, and I won't tell you. You fail to... What's this? You take the record decks. You mean record deck? No, I don't know. Okay. No, we cool. Not records. That's like 1960s. You don't do those. Stardate 6087.6. The Republic is currently approaching the Vardane system. Sensors have detected unusual energy fluctuations near one of the Vardanian moons. Starfleet has ordered us to investigate. Yeah, you have to use it multiple times to go to the next log. It's kind of silly. Oh, three different decks. Uh, I don't know. 
this, although there are no reports of Romulans in this sector. Mm hmm. Captain Bravo, Stardate 6088.1. We have successfully driven off our assailants. Major damage has been sustained by our warp engines. Communications has reported that USS Enterprise is in sector. I requested Mr. Scott's assistance in repairing damage to the Republic. With luck, we will be fully operational in a couple of days. But we never got that communication, so they... We didn't get any communication from the Republic. The Enterprise has unexplicably opened fire upon us. Captain Patterson has been mortally wounded. We have sustained major damage to all systems. Impulse power is out. We cannot understand why... And then everyone died. There the end. No more log decks, Captain. <laughs> That's a good I point. wonder what could be going on. Yeah, we didn't get any communication from the Republic. We didn't get any communication about the Republic until Starfleet said, Hey, the Republic is heavily damaged. Go help. This turbo lift. Maybe you were thinking of yesterday's Enterprise when you said Warship. Ah, yeah. Battleship. God, what a good-ass episode. Right? Jeez. Right? Jeez. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I bet Janeway did this. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Is that... Don't worry about it. <laughs> I won't worry about that. Um... What was I doing? We know what the correct impedance. Well, Spock knows. He just won't tell us. An impedance. Spock, <laughs> Captain. The information obtained from the engineering journals indicates the correct impedance setting to be nineteen thousand ohms. Go ahead and adjust okay. the setting, Spock. Power has now been restored, Captain. Great. Thanks, Spock. Wow. Yep. These are the <laughs> All right, so now we're going to we're going to head back to the auxiliary bridge or control room because now we can route power. Okay, so save news replace Spock, what is the situation with the impulse engines? The main computer is too badly damaged to actively control the power circuits. Mr. Spock, what is this? There is extensive damage to the main processing unit of the ship's computer. It will take several days at a star base to repair. We don't have several days, Mr. Spock. Unless we can find a suitable computational alternative, there will be no way to control the ship's systems. That's just great, Spock. We don't exactly carry an M5 computer in our inventory. Got quite a few things in our inventory, but not that. Correct, Doctor. However, there may be another alternative. Linked tricorders, along with the circuits in the data reader, should have the processing power necessary to control a single starship system. Thank goodness Just for one, though. processing. I don't know what computers could do without it. <laughs> <laughs> Dual core. Thanks, Ensign. <laughs> it's the way of the future. All right, let's see. Enterprise here. We're still tracking the distress call. Are you all right, sir? Yes, Uhura. Just wanted a status report, Kirk out. Well, that's nice. At least they're going fine. The auxiliary control room view screen is still operating. It is displaying a view of empty space. I also find it amusing that's a more accurate representation of the size of the view screen on the orig original Enterprise. Right. Yes. Crudely? Ah, eh, whatever. There's nothing there, Rick. Bones, please. Spock crudely attaches the medical tricorder to the computer console. Both tricorders are rigged into the main computer's central processing unit. We now have enough computational power to control a single ship's system. Great. That's wonderful. Fantasmic. Amazing. Save 
Save new game. One starship system, Gravy. So, uh... Uh-oh. Captain, look. An Alasi ship. Ah, uh, who could have... They were cloaked. <laughs> hmm. Is that all you can say? Captain, I suggest we try to raise the shields. No. <laughs> do not do that. Do not raise the shields. Or you will soft lock. With impulse power online, oh. And the tricorders performing computer control, I can divert power to... Weapons. We want to divert power to weapons first. Power allocated to weapon systems, Captain. Captain, I suggest we try to raise the shields. Shut up, Spock. Are you trying to screw <laughs> us over? Now we yes, have Spock Captain. on Mr. Spock this spot right here, specifically right there. The fire control weapons system. control is functioning properly. However... There appears to be a jam in the primary loading mechanism. You have to do this. And I will explain why when the time comes. To clear it, okay. physically examine the mechanism. Currently, all turbo lift access to the torpedo bay is blocked by a hull breach. It is imperative that we get the weapons online. What happened to getting the shields online, Spock? I don't know. And the tricorders performing computer control. I can divert power. Weapons. All right, now we can put the shields, shields up. Up, sir. Save need replace. We should be even okay. did the little yeah info ram info thing. Put it on screen, Spock. You have about five minutes to raise the shields. By the way, before they just shoot you, I think. Oh, okay. Well, if it isn't Captain Kirk. Fancy meeting you out here all alone in such a shabby starship. What do you want? You should be more civil, considering your enterprise is far away on a mercy mission helping that poor traitor. It was a setup? I can see why they made you captain. I love this guy. I wish he had a name. <laughs> I assume since you haven't... He does. First name, Elassi, last name, captain. Yeah. Why? Yes, I do. It seems you failed to give one of my associates some rather important information. The Masada, I presume. Back in mission you want two. The locations yep. of all your imprisoned comrades. Yes, Kirk. The Republic's computers will have the data just as your Enterprise would. I give you one minute to comply. Just try and get. It. You can't threaten me. They absolutely can threaten us. <laughs> it will take time. Just it will take time. The controls are smashed and the main computer is badly damaged. It will take hours to get power to the computer banks. Maybe I should just pump a few torpedoes into your shields and check it out for myself. The Republic will fall apart if you fire on us. Then you'll never get the data. All right, Kirk. We'll do it your way. I would rather not kill you. Besides, there's an old friend that wants to meet you. I give you 30 minutes. And remember, no tricks. Captain, the main computer is far beyond... Shut up, Spock. 30 minutes then. Kirk out. So we are now on a 30-minute so timer. Uh, that is more than enough okay. time to do what we need to do, but we are on a time limit. Otherwise, he they'll just shoot us. Okay. All right. Well, <laughs> let's go. Oh, uh, actually, let me demonstrate something real quick. With impulse power... Weapons. Captain, the Alasi can surely detect the lowering of our shields. They will undoubtedly try to board us if we lower them. Yep. Okay. Yep, once you get the shields up, uh, that's it. You can't um, divert power. Because the Alasis will just... Well, Spock won't let you. They'll just come over here. Just come over. They'll just come on over. They'll just come over. They'll just come over and see how you're doing. So we can't get to weapons. We can't walk there, obviously. There's too much radiation. We don't have radiation suits in the 23rd century that we can access, at least. But not outside the movies. Mm -hmm. Spock, please check out the... If we had tried to divert power to the transporter, Spock would say something like... Uh, he'd say, well, we can't lower our shields. And then Kirk would actually bring this up. Spock, would it be possible to connect the fusion power pack directly into the transporter power circuits? Fascinating. It can be done. However, the transporter will only be able to transport a single person. Do it, Spock. Uh oh Yep. 
All right, Red Shirt, you're up. I love this little boot up sequence for the transporter controls. Ah, Windows 20. <laughs> it's so good. And you do have to wait until those it starts blinking to actually interact with it. <laughs> These sliders act. Actually, I think they're good. All right. Save need replace. So this is where you're soft locked if you raise the shields first. We can't go to tor we can't go to weapons because of the radiation. So logically, you'd think, let's teleport, let's transport there. Spock, please check out the. Tra it, unless you divert power to weapons first. For the transporter. Yeah, 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 yeah. There is nothing at the moment. There is nothing at the yeah, moment for me to do there. He looks at you with a. He looks at God damn it! Hold on a second. Right, the tricorders are down. I failed to see the. Look at the view. There you fucking spot. go. Okay, there. Okay, I was a little worried for a second. Unless you first divert power to weapons, even when there's a fucking Elasi ship with its weapons tracking on you, and then try to fire. You will never learn that there is a jam in the weapon system. And therefore, the uh. game, you will have no reason to transport to the weapons area. And all Spock will do if you tell him to, uh, to, it'll go all the way to this point. And all Spock will do is he'll walk over, poke it a few times, and go, There are no coordinates set for the, trans for the transporter, Captain. And you're just stuck. Uh. So... Uh, yeah, I I imagine, like, this was just sort of slapped together in, like, the year between the DOS, like, the floppy disk and the CD version. I, I get a feeling they didn't really test this out. It's a pretty kind of interesting oversight, really. Because, uh... What do you mean is playtesting? Mm-hmm. Because, yeah, once you've raised the shield, Spock won't let you divert power at all. And checking out the fire system, fire controls... While there's no power to the fire control system, we'll have just Spock will go, there's no power, Captain. So, yeah. Oh, shit. All you can do is either load a save or wait 30 minutes for the pirates to blow you up and then put a save. <laughs> uh, the other option, so, like, there are actually a couple ways around it. Um, the other option, if you don't uh, think to divide, divert power, is uh, when the Elasti ship shows up, you can actually then run... Let's see, how does it go again? Basically, you divert power to weapons, check the fire control system, and then once the Elasi ship comes in, you leave and run down to the transporter room and do what you need to do. If you do that, though, you've got five minutes before the Elasi just shoot you. So this way is just a lot uh, better. Uh, okay, fine, I'll go. Spock, please check out the transom cage. I Just want to lean into the torpedo bay and unjam the loading <laughs> mechanism. If you don't succeed, we'll all be on permanent shore leave in an Alasi jail. I'll do my best, sir. Goodbye, Richard. It was nice knowing you. Do it, Spock. Energize. What's causing the malfunction in the loading mechanism? The inner loading door is stuck in the closed position. Now, I can force it open, but when the loading cycle has begun, the room will lose pressure. We won't be able to beam back here again. Do it, Ensign. We'll just have to gamble that the system doesn't jam again. The door is open, Captain. I'm ready to transport back. Beam him back, Spock. Yeah, you'd think the red shirt would, like, die or something okay. from radiation or whatever, but now he's fine. Good job, Ensign. I did good, didn't I, sir? Aw, you did great. No, you did well, Ensign. I mean well. I'm a security officer, not a grammarian. Ah. Can we give the Alasi Gotta taste your own medicine bones. Let's get back to auxiliary control and give them our information. Now let's give the Alasi something to remember us by. A very efficient job, Captain. When I... So, I've never played this mission before, because I only own the floppy version on this Interplay 10-year anniversary um, CD I have. So, this sequence is not in the original uh, edition of this game. 
This so when I first played this and I got stuck here, I was like, what the fuck am I missing? It's one of the couple of things I actually, I, I had to look up and it's just like, really? But anyway. Save me, give place. Well, we made it. Yep. With impulse power online. Weapons. Trans weapons. Shield. Trans weapons. Captain, the Alasi can. Mr. Spock, what is the condition? There is no power. Let me see here. What's the sequence? Use the communicator? Yeah. Well, Captain Kirk. I trust you and your valiant crew have retrieved the data I requested. Not yet. We're having trouble accessing all the data files. Yes, we have. You'll have to beam over and get it, though. The computer subspace transmitter is out. Not yet. Yes, we have. How convenient, Kirk. We'll beam over, but no tricks. My sensors read that only your shields have power. Lower them now. We'll comply. Kirk out. <laughs> oh, we'll lower our shields, all right. With impulse power online and weapons power allocated to weapon systems, Captain. Sensors indicate that the Alassi ship has lowered its shields. I suggest we prepare your surprise soon, Captain. They will beam over any moment. Save need replace elite. Pre Save need. I wonder how much time I actually have. Five minutes. I think it's five minutes? How Maybe. long do you think it takes them to go from... Because that's it's not a big ship. I guess. I, I don't I don't guess oh, it's a big ship. Maybe 30 seconds. I don't know. Maybe it takes them a little while to boot up. <laughs> like, maybe they're maybe on they Windows weren't actually like 15. Maybe they didn't actually think Kirk would do it, and they haven't actually powered their transporters. They, they're not... <laughs> like, like, oh shit, he's doing it? They actually lowered their shields, and they're just kind of sitting there slack-jawed like what what Wait, this is like, working this isn't this isn't how this usually goes <laughs> oh shit get to the transports i guess yeah go guys go holy crap I... the landing party has been taken captive by the Alasi, oh the really that's it does not negotiate with terrorists as you look forward to a long captivity you wonder who will take over command of the okay i'm not actually sure what i think I we expecting. all know <laughs> I was expecting him to like beam in, but eh. right. Oh well. I think we all know. No, no, uh, Picard's not even born yet. No, I mean currently, oh. it's like Sulu who gets it right. Right. Sulu gets command of the. Ex oh. Was it the Excelsior? No, it's an Excelsior class, right? I forgot what it's called though. Unfortunately, I don't remember. He gets command of. I it mean, at the end of five, I forget. You think it would be him with Kirk being an idiot <laughs> in this timeline? Anyway. Mr. Spock, what is the condition? Photon torpedo. Mr. Spock, what is the photon? Okay, we'll we'll do it. We'll do Mr. it. Mr. Spock, what is the condition? Do it, please. Mr. Spock, what is photon? Stop talking to Mr. <laughs> Spock <laughs> and do it. Do shoot. Nothing to do here. With impulse power on weapon. Shoot. Power sensors there. Okay. That the Alassi ship. Yeah, yeah, shoot the. Mr. Spock, what is the Fucking condition? hell! When was the button again? Oh, there it is. I should have known you'd try something underhanded like this. Weapons Master, fire all weapons on the Republic! We can, Captain. All weapon systems offline. They, we had them all in that one wing! Captain, the Enterprise is... How's our weapons wing? Activate cloaking device, Kirk. Until we meet again. Not too soon, I hope. Watch yourself, Captain. It may be sooner than you realize. Enterprise oh, no. Captain Kirk, are you safe, sir? We're fine, Lieutenant. Sir, we picked up another ship nearby and we came as fast as we could. It appeared to cloak. Were you attacked by Romulans? No, Ensign. It looks like the Alassi have been doing some business with him. Scotty, beam us back. We need to find that ship that attacked the Republic. Aye, Captain. We need to find ourselves. <laughs> Come on, Spock. Get the light out. It is the Excelsior, according to Gravy. It is the use. Okay, good. I wasn't sure if I was mixing up the name with the class or something. 
We are in pursuit of the uh, all the uh, classes are named themselves, the first ship. Okay, ah, alright, yeah. Yeah, so there is a USS Galaxy. Okay. But, like, yeah. Uh, Sulu gets his own ship, because he shows up at the end of 6 and saves Kirk's bacon. Let's see, Captain's Log. Planet Vardane, a member of the Federation whose motives have not always matched the high ideals of other Federation cultures. Captain, I did not expect to hear Why do we let them in the Federation? I understand the Republic. I had bad experiences with the Vardane long ago, Mr. Spock. Fascinating. Captain, I am leaving a Constitution class starship, heading for Vardane oh. at Warp Factor 5. Captain, its transponder codes match ours. Sensors indicate it is an exact duplicate of the Enterprise. Including hull markings. Oh, what the? Why? Open hailing frequency. Increase to warp factor eight. Send a message to Starfleet. Open increase warp, warp factor eight. I don't think you can go. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that the fastest you could go on this is like six or seven. I'm not sure. And <laughs> nobody told Kirk. Captain, we're being hailed by the enemy ship. So, Captain Kirk, I, I don't know who this, this the fella team. is. Uh, I am Dr. Ayaz Verdell of the Verdane Defense Force. You do remember VDF! Me, VDF! <laughs> Sorry. I remember you. Ten years ago, when I was on the Farragut, we exposed your unethical practices to the Vardane Council. The old Verdane Council. Politics is such a fickle business. The new one is much less concerned with trivial concerns. I remember your part in my disgrace. Which is why, when we began to construct our own Constitution-class ships, I insisted that we have our own Enterprise. Okay, I was expecting Mirror Universe. Damn. Sorry. It's nothing like Damn. that. It's just, the, these guys was like, let's build our own Enterprise. Let's build the Enterprise. Let's build the Enterprise. <laughs> ten seconds to lower your shields and power down your weapons, or we will fire. You won't get away with this. The Vardane can't honestly expect to take on the entire Federation. If your Republic was any indication, your fleet will be good for nothing except target practice. Weapons Master Breen. Yeah, you have a target. ship, we have a we few have hundred. Of, yeah. <laughs> anyway, yep, okay. <laughs> and yeah, so, just Enterprise 2. <laughs> just Enterprise 2. They didn't give it a cool name. That's right. Best I can tell here is that he specifically wants to frame Kirk for stuff. So they built their own enterprise, and whenever, and that's why they attacked the Republic, hoping to frame us. Yeah. Okay. Yes, All right. Evil ass. So here we are, and the final battle of the game, and oh, mamma mia! It's, it's you. It's a dinger. It's the first battle you ever did. Yeah, we're fighting another Constitution class ship. Oh man. That's so, real. Before we start, um, I'll tell you how this mission goes in the floppy disk version. You still arrive to find the Republic in dis disrepair. You do beam down to it. You go to the, you go beam down to the bridge. Go, oh my god! Then you go, uh. you walk out of the bridge into sick bay, and go, oh my god! Then you beam back to the Enterprise, and then this happens. Okay. It's not exactly <laughs> a. A, a like a climactic finale of a, a final mission. Mm. So, well, Memory Alpha has nothing on Vordain, so this is an original thing. Mm -hmm. Captain, are you sure you want to? I see. I don't think it would be part of the Federation for much longer. No. Um, okay. Well, with the shields up. Ah, oh, mamma mia. Okay. Actually, that's pretty ethical, too, but, uh... 
Alright, here we fucking go. Actually, let me save over that so I don't forget to arm weapons. Okay, so, uh... I get him. It's our, it's our equal. It's another, yeah. it's another Federation, like, another Enterprise. And, like, you know, you think it, it's pretty neat. But, uh, after a few seconds, this happens. So, have fun fighting three ships all at once. <laughs> so, now there are two Elasi ships, along with a Constitution-class starship gunning for you. There's, there's, there's us. Now you mean that one? <laughs> yep, that, yeah, that one. So, oh, oh boy, yep, alright, let's get on those shields. Get on those shields, Scotty. Uh, uh, I think they are tailing me. Yep, their ass uh, shields are taking them. Uh, okay, yep, let's, um, let's yep, slow there down. Goes, try to, there try goes to your evade. impulse, there goes your warp. Hold on, hold on. Oh, our hull's damaged. There goes uh, your other warp. Power. <laughs> okay, this, I think this is going great. Fuck! <laughs> and then the air fires explodes. Not the, not the evil one. Oh, 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 no, hold, fucking hell. <laughs> yeah, that's about how I expected that to go. All right, so when I told you I wasn't sure how long this was going to take, this All right, is what strap I was, in, boyos. This is what I was referring to. I've, I've actually heard rumors of this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah, mm-hmm, yeah. I see they are well-founded. Oh, yeah. God damn it. <laughs> fucking hell. So the strategy uh, here. you nicked him. Yeah, I did get him. Um, the strategy here, honestly, is to go ahead and take out the Elasti ships first, if you can, because the cut the because uh, the uh, other Enterprise is yeah, it's another Enterprise, so it's just as, as durable as you. as you. Well, I say as durable as you, but you're not, <laughs> you know. So uh, uh, uh what's this? Do a corkscrew. Use the boost. I can't. You can't really do any real evasive maneuvers. the brakes. In this game. It's use the brakes and use the boost to, to get through, respectively, by the way. Alright, hit the brakes is the train guy. No! Hit the brakes! Hit the brakes! I can't stop it! And oh. then it explodes like this. Alright, that's two. Would you believe me if I told you that in my test playthrough I did last, a few weeks back, I, I beat this in the you first try. One. First try. And I, I was, would. I was extremely surprised. Because you weren't streaming it. <laughs> I'm glad there's no ammo count for photons in this. Oh, yeah. They are just stronger facers. Oh, okay. Unlike right. in Bridge Commander, where there is an ammo count for well, them. I, I hope they are much, much, much more powerful to compensate. Fucking shit. Uh, they're pretty good. You can also fire, like, four of them, I think. Yeah, stream is cursed. Yeah. Voyager torpedo counter. Mm. No, but I mean, considering how often they shit them out, <laughs> I Fuck. imagine it gets pretty high. <laughs> okay, what's that? Three or four? All right, whatever. Three and... Okay. Go ahead and keep count, because I'm interested in how many tries this is going to ta actually take me. Okay. There are several... Good grief! Get on those engines. Ah. Uh. Also, the music just stopped because I loaded. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, no, but, no. It's never a good thing when you hear the enemy shooting at you because they don't usually miss. <laughs> oh, you mean this entire fight? The entire fight, yeah. I don't know how long to... I'll, I'll check it after this, Gravy. Now, I know what I just said, but there are a few moments in Bridge Commander that I equate to this. Okay. Well, well, maybe one moment 
where they make you take on, I think, like way too much. Three or four enemy ships at once, and not the the cheap uh, baby ships. Yeah. Okay, that's four, I believe, or five. So this is the this is the fifth attempt. This is the fifth attempt. Let's say. Okay. But get some damn no, God damn it! <laughs> okay, get on the ship. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, but, but there's a lot more you can do in Bridge Commander. Like, for one, the power settings are sliders, and you have the main power warp core. Then you also have secondary generator and battery backups. So you can, like, put most of your systems at, like, I think the cap is 120%, 25%. Uh huh. So, and you can sustain that for, like, I, I think, like, I guess five minutes F for everything. And you could like like take power out of your sensors and stuff like that. Yeah. Like, the power from sensors, blah blah blah. In this game, your 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 maneuverings just move the cursor and you can adjust the engine power. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Um I don't know if it's confirmed, but I mean you you might be able to like disable your weapons and that gets power to shields. Faster? I'm not sure. I really don't know. But like I described in the first uh, session of this, this really is just... Uh, this is Wing Commander Light, but in massive starships. And is absolutely the weakest part of the game. And it really is unfortunate that, it's, that the final thing you do isn't some kind of really cool puzzle, like Showdown. But it's this. It's this garbage. Alright, so this is attempt number six. Yep. It's, uh... <laughs> it's the opposite of Star Trek Online. Oh, yeah. Where the ship battles are easily the best part of that game, and ground combat is kind of... no longer terrible, but it's definitely still inferior. Mm -hmm. I keep meaning to actually bring it up, but, uh, I mean, I honestly feel like... God, that fucking noise! Um, I honestly feel like this is the best way to do a Star Trek game, is an adventure game like this. Minus the not-so-good starship combat. Yeah. Like, that's probably the, the the closest you can get to the spirit of, of the series. Yeah, to the TV shows. Yeah. Maybe not the movies. <laughs> you ever seen the, um... You ever seen the, um, tie-in game for the 2009 movie? Which one was that? The, the first oh, Kelvin the, timeline. Was that movie? the reboot? Yeah. Oh. I, I'm pretty Ye sure. Yes. It's a it's a cover shooter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it sure is. All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and take take, uh, take the L on that one. All right, attempt number seven. Hmm. Ah ah ah! No! Oh, God damn it! Uh. <laughs> Get on the shields. Get them shields up. Also, the, yeah, these these Elasi ships fire three photon torpedoes at once instead of the usual one. What? Yeah, yeah. They. Sh so you're just not only are you outnumbered, you're extremely outgunned. It's it's really bad. All right, did I at least damage them? No, 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 not the other Enterprise. I wanted to look at the. Oh. Ah. All right. Attempt eight. Eight. Okay. It really doesn't help that I have no idea where they actually are in relation to that radar bit there. He's just flying, literally flying circles around me. You can make a detective game in Star Trek. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, a detective game, adventure game, sure. Alright, I'm gonna assume I'm... Yep, I see those shields are a little down. So let's try to evade. Have you ever played sequel to this? Ask Reed. Judgment rights? I... 
I turned my house upside down looking for my CD of Judgment Rights because I wanted to play it after this, and I could not find it. I have, I just could not find it. Fortunately, it is on GOG for another $10, but so if I still can't... Shut up, Scott. All right, I'm, I'm taking the L. If I can't, still can't find my CD copy, I'll just uh, throw down another 10 bucks and get get it on GOG. Probably the best way to get it any, anyway. Oh. God. Ugh. All right, let's see so. if I can catch those Elasi when they beam in or warp in. Ah, God. Uh, uh. <laughs> yes. Good hits. Good hits. No, stop showing me the other Enterprise. Show me that. Ah, you won't mean that. Uh. uh. All right, are how are running? we doing? No. Ah. Uh, and we just took a Could be better. Hit. All right. The brakes. See if they can f see if they fly past us. Yes. Did you see that? I, I've that seen. Fucking turn! They just did. Hmm. <laughs> um. I'm seeing a lot of different opinions of just repeated save and loading and getting lucky for this. Some people are like, ah, you can't constantly speed change. Maybe that'll help. Mm. Yeah, and that's just, like, honestly... turn like a madman. That's the way to do it, is save after you blow up a ship. Because it does let you save in the middle of these, which is a godsend. And, and like those you're seeing, more or less a requirement. Temp 10. All right, come. There are several. God. All right, up, up, left, two, two, two. Shoot, shoot. Where? There. <sighs> yeah, you can't have two monitors in Star Trek Gravy. That's too much. I shot. It. Well, oh boy. Ah! All right, well, I landed a hit, <laughs> probably dinged their shield slightly. Maybe when they're behind you, drop like half speed, so maybe they overshoot. Yeah, that's what I've kind of been trying to do. Is is, is the okay. uh, Ace Combat Zero maneuver? <laughs> uh huh. Your your sick tricks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. shit! All right. Oh. Okay. Attempt what? Eleven. Okay. Eleven. Right. I'm just gonna fly straight for a minute. Get on the shields. Yeah, cause see, they're apparently behind me, but like the the radar showed them right there. Yeah, problem problem with a flat radar in a 3D space. No, no. Yeah, shut. I know. Damn it. Well, this is another fine mess. All right, attempt 12. All right, I'm gonna wait till they start shooting. Ah, okay. Hit, hit the brakes. Is? Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. I got some good damage in on that one. Bullshit! 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 <laughs> uh. Uh. Okay. Well, I got some damage on him. It's pretty heavy damage. Yeah, I can't trade fire. Oh, they have that green bullshit. What the fuck is that? I have no idea. I don't know. <laughs> like I said, you're comp Yeah, they're like firing fucking Shakunatsu Hadoukits at me. Like, <laughs> Jesus Christ. They've got like plasma torpedoes or something. Yeah. 
And by the way, this is with the weapons upgrade we picked up in that one mission. Oh yeah, that. <laughs> I forgot about that. I don't blame you for forgetting. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Okay, well, their, their hull's a little fucked up, too. But that's not gonna matter. Even if I blow up one ship, if I'm really low on health, that's not gonna mu matter much. Okay... Ah! Okay, that's fine. It's- no, it's not fi- it's not fine, it's not fine, but you know what I mean. You know what I fucking mean. Uh-huh. Oh my gosh. Alright. Where even are they? Behind you, of course. <laughs> Always behind you, yeah. No. Uh. No! See, you, you turn faster when you slow, but when you slow down, you're just easier to hit. Yeah. Okay. Like, wow, that was fast. Shut up! Stop saying that over. over. Alright, 15, I think? 16. Six God damn it! I'm doing worse than I thought! Come on, blow up first! Blow up first! Blow up first! Okay, alright, alright. The Enterprise, enemy Enterprise is down. Uh, that's the good news. Bad news is you're fucked. I'm still severely damaged, but that is one less ship that is fucking murdering me. <laughs> Damn pirates. Alright, now it just... Can I actually... Can I do the fuck? I don't know how. All right. Ah, oh, God. Hey, that's one of your torpedoes. Okay, it's back. Yeah. Shooting at me. I'm shooting at them. Hitting God you. damn it! What the fuck? <laughs> ah! Because they got three torpedoes, so they can shit out damage oh, like oh, that. God. Mm. Oh man, I might have to reload the other save. I might be in an unwinnable spot again. Cause they just immediately. Like, I guess they thought that would be helpful to have Scotty interrupt you when, with that over and over, but it's not. It's so unhelpful. I always say, like, save after, like, when you're in a 
good positioning right here, right here, up right being here, fired right on. Right here, right here. Yeah. Because right now, the game is stay away for a while, get our ships, get our shields back up. <laughs> Do our best to just not get blown up immediately. Fighters don't exist in the good Star Trek gravy. Yeah, no, no fighters. Oh, that said, there are there are ships as uh, you can do like fighters in Star Trek Online. Like, I imagine that they didn't exist. I mean, there there's shuttlecraft. Oh Jesus! Maybe we're fine for now. I don't know. Okay, well there went our emergency power, so I I need to have Scotty go on engines for right now. So because there went all of our maneuvering. Like he says it twice. I guess because oh, yeah, because photon phases and phase. torpedoes. Yeah. Oh, that one only has one torpedo. Your engines are back. That's because they're at emergency power. Okay, good. One's oh. one's back. Once that runs out, it's gonna be. Oh, Wait, Jesus which one? Christ. Okay, Which I'll... one is engine? Is it the the ones at the back of the saucer, or is it the warp nacelles? All right, so the... I can't point at them. Let's in middle of battle. Damn it! I can't point at them. Um, so yeah, no. Just tell me it's the nacelles or not. No wait. So these bars indicate power to the engines. These two right here are oh. our engines. Oh well, that should be incorrect. As far as I know, I I don't know. Because those are the warp nacelles, which is oh, okay. what the name says. And the little red things on the back of the ships, that's the impulse engines. Okay. So what do you think would be your limit here? Um, I'm going until I'm done. Until I beat this. Well, I, I've mean... discovered something. Oh, fuck me. Uh, what was that? <laughs> I've discovered something. I see. Um... I don't know if it will work with this, though. Okay. Uh, t tell me. Because, yeah, no, um, I just honestly want this done. So, someone from a German adventure forum did a community playthrough for this Hell yeah. um, a year ago. Okay. And they created a tool that disables the engines and ships of, and weapons of enemy ships. <laughs> Hell yeah. That's the least these guys deserve. And I. Oh. Now, maybe it's just me, and you know how I am. Hang on. But. I think you've overcome the boss already. You're just killing the ads. Damn right I have. Okay, hold on. I think I'm on the cusp this time. Yeah, you got some good damage there. Yeah, that's on just one of the other ships, though. Oh, got one. Uh, yeah, that one's mostly disabled. <laughs> I'm not out of the woods yet, because I'm pretty sure the, the ship left is the three torpedo one. Probably. Actually, no, no, get, get those shields up. Let's just fly around with no weapons for a little while, that's a good idea. <laughs> Who needs them? Yeah, unless you see it, there's no reason to have them up. Oops, wrong one. Wrong button. It's fine, though. I do think the manual mentioned something about that, to having power to the, en the weapons when you don't need them. I'm not too sure, though. If it if it's just fluff or not? God. Oh, that is that just the one torpedo one? Oh, okay. I don't really have much. Uh. I don't actually have anything to worry about then. 
You save that. Save. I'm still gonna save. Well, Target analysis. well, it looks like our shields are mostly back up. Yep. Alright, come on, you fuck. Lying fuck. No, wait. Good hits. Yep, they're, they're almost done. Now you see their center is red. Okay. And if your center is red, that means you're almost dead. Red is dead, yeah. This reminds Gravy of Garbage Combat in the F90 Gundam game. But at least that one had animations and music. <laughs> There's supposed to be battle music playing. There is supposed to be music playing here. Alright, how, how are we doing? Uh, not bad, but not bad. Hole is kind I of... Like, hull is... You could tell Scotty to repair hull, but he takes a very, very long time to do it. So, I'm just focusing on shields. Yeah, the bleep boop is the battle music, right? The fucking tricorders that no one will turn off? Yeah. You got it. I knew it. Ah, it's fine. We've almost got this. I fucked up their engines, so they can't... They shouldn't be able to evade me for much longer. Ah, what was it? Like, 26? 24. 24? 24. According to my counter. Ah. Okay. The reason oh. I thought this was going to be a mirror universe is because... Uh... Sort of peace treaty between the Romulans and the Federation. Yeah, that says the Federation can't make cloaking devices. Federation, well, the Empire never signed a peace treaty with the Romulans in the Mirror Universe. Oh, nicely done. Thank you. This is this is infuriating, uh, an absolutely infuriating end to what is otherwise a very good adventure game, in my opinion. Yep. So, I can feel it. Want to rub some? <laughs> I can see it. Want to add some insult to the injury? Well, that's over. Uh, Duplicate Enterprise indeed. That alien contraption was no match for the real thing. <laughs> Mr. Scott. Shut up, Scott. With all due respect. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> no, it's with shut all due respect and at long last. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> uh, I, I hope Patrick Stewart wrote that line. Physically painful. What if the Vardai yeah. have more Constitution class vessels? I honestly don't like how they did this. They actually typed Wessels out. I don't know. blockade Vardane until they agree to destroy their weapons facilities. Anyway, yeah, Vardane's kind of time to starve a civil a planet. <laughs> Vardane's in some hot water. Message from time to starve him out. On screen. Oh, we're gonna nuke him. Carry out general directive four. I guess I should have been more careful around the floor. It doesn't matter. Scoring is just for bragging rights. Fucking who cares? In the end. The top brass at Starfleet are impressed. Outstanding work, Jim. It fucking better be. We have reviewed your overall performance That's an A! this year at 92% Enterprise. But not an A+. Plus. <laughs> magnificent, Jim. Just magnificent. This will end up in the Starfleet Academy textbooks. My congratulations to you and your crew. They're talking about making you an admiral, Jim. But for now... Oh, no. Oh, no! What will end what up, will in, the end up? In, the, in the books? Yes. All of it. Um, yeah. Maybe they'll, you know, leave out the part where we launched nuclear missiles at the Enterprise. And blew it up. <laughs> Stuck a bomb that was an alternate side. timeline. I remember reading a walkthrough of this that, like, honest to God, framed it like the right thing to do were all the bad ideas. So <laughs> it said something like, Starfleet doesn't want a pansy as a captain. You have to pick this response. 
<laughs> just full renegade. Surely at last. Good. I know this great spot on Cameron Star, Jim. Why would you go to a star? Where you will no doubt doctor wallow in sensory overload and emotional display. Well, heck, Spock, it wouldn't be any fun otherwise. Jim, we've got to find some... The part where we solve the door math puzzle will end up in books. The power of math. Whenever you encounter a security power door, make sure three, that yeah. it's base three. Make sure if... It's check base, base three. I've always solved the math for you. Here you go. Spock, you will come with us, won't you? I cannot let go by a chance to study the primitive and raw emotional outburst at the level I am. That's the spirit, Spock. Okay, Admiral. What are you waiting for? You might want to get the hole repaired first. Nah. I've got some adventure left in me before I accept an Admiral's desk job, Bones. Take us out of here, Mr. Sulu. Walk back to four. And then he was promoted. The end. Okay. Okay. Very few people have the ability to fire up our imaginations and make us think about the human condition. Gene Roddenberry, the creator of Star Trek, was one of those people. He took us where no man has gone before and beyond. He created a starship, its crew, an entire universe, and brought them to life for millions of people. Without Gene, there would have been no Star Trek computer game, or a Star Trek television series. Gene Roddenberry, born 1921, died 1991. We honor your memory. Incidentally, that is, again, that is the year before this version of the game released. Load a previously saved game. Game over! Game over. <sighs> it sure is. It's it? over. You did it. Oh, mamma mia. Like I said, great game. I honestly love this. This this game it is it is a wonderful uh, adaptation of the show, and like I said, this is probably the best way to do a Star Trek game is make it a, a point and click adventure. Starship combat is is uh, it could be better. That final battle is literal bullshit, as I believe I've demonstrated yep. appropriately. Twenty four times. <laughs> <laughs> um, the in, like Song Gog for nine bucks ninety nine cents recommended. Um. Definitely better than the floppy disk version, which is what I usually played, initially played. And again, it the, the expanded final mission is very welcome, as opposed to it just dumping you in a, that bullshit fight. Soft lock, mm -hmm. notwithstanding. You gotta be careful with that. <laughs> right. But uh, yeah, um, I'm going to continue looking for my CD copy of Judgment Rights, because I'm going to want to... Oh, play just through. remember... It'll be in the last place you look. Because then you found it. Always seems that way, doesn't it? The last place you that's think how you it works. is where you find it. That's that's very insightful of you. Because that's uh, how you find it. That's I'll, that's I'll, when you find it. I'll keep in the last in, place you look. Because you're not looking for it anymore. I'll keep that in mind. Um, but, yeah, that's that's going to okay. be it for this series. So, thanks for coming along. And um, What do they say in Star Trek? See you next time, Space Sky? Live long and space hard. That's it.